Hello fellow Blenderheads, Ben here. This is uh, a tutorial, kind of a crash course introduction to volume shading in Cycles. So we use volumes for uh, various strange techniques, but we, we do use it for smoke and fire, which is an important thing. And I, I presume that over time we'll probably use it for some other things. Right now, it, in some ways, it's just fun to play around with. And so I want to give you some tools you can play around with that for. This is a redo of a tutorial I did about a year ago. I thought I might update it a little bit and uh, correct a couple errors I'd made that time. I've learned more since then. So let's get started. I'm in the default Blender uh, scene here. I'm set up for Blender Render. First thing, you got to change that to the Cycles Render. Also, I like to have a small window in the lower right-hand corner that I use to preview what I'm doing. The reason I like to do that is because the Blender Renderer I'm sorry, the Cycles Renderer takes up a lot of processing power. And if you do it in a large window, it just really goes quite slow, even with a more powerful computer. A small window down here gives it less area, less, less fewer pixels to calculate, and it just goes faster and lightens the load. And I don't always need to get such a close view. And if I do, I can just sort of zoom in and move around. So I like to have this little window down here. If I press Shift-C, I've got my Cycles Preview here, which right now there isn't a lot going on. Okay, so we're going to start with this box. We'll do our volumes in here. Uh, what I like to do is I'm just going to tab into that and move that up by one blender unit. That allows it to just sit on the ground. I'm going to make a plane and scale that out, make that nice and big. Um, and so my box will, my volume box will sit on top of that. And uh, maybe I'll make some lights here real quick. I've already got my one light. Let's go into a top view and set up some kind of lighting scheme. Maybe this will be my key light there. And uh, that light will have an intensity of, in fact, let's go into our nodes real quick. We're gonna spend a lot of time in the node editor today. So we may as well get started. And uh, that's gonna have an emission node. We'll set that to give it a strength of, let's say 500. It's gonna be a fairly powerful one. And uh, Oh, I'm trying to make sense of this, and I realize I'm not looking through my camera. Let's look. I guess I really don't have to look through my camera for this. Um, top view, we'll make that our key light, and then we'll do a uh, fill light over here, which means we'll make it a bit weaker, maybe 200. I'll also make it larger to make the shadows much softer, and uh, maybe I'll make it lower. I don't know. I don't really care. That's, that's fine. And uh, even even weaker yet. And then maybe I'll do a little kicker back here. Move it down close to the floor. Um, maybe I'll even make that a spotlight. And uh, narrow that cone in a bit. Let's see. Move that there. Move it there. And we'll up his power to a thousand just for a second and see that really isn't doing anything. But it may do something when we've got volumes going on. Let's uh, move it a bit on the side of our fill. Move it over there. We'll see what that does when the time comes. Anyways, there's our lighting setup. And uh, there we go. So here we are. I'm going to move our lights to the second layer. And I'm going to turn on the second layer, but if I want to get rid of them for a minute, I can... Just click that layer and they'll go away. Okay, here we are with our main topic of interest, our cube. We're going to tell it to use nodes. That's going to give us a diffuse shader. You'll notice that the diffuse shader goes into the surface material output. Okay, what that means is when it's a surface, the light hits the surface. It, it comes from one of these lights. The little photon comes in, it hits the surface, and then when it passes through the surface, if it does, it's either going to bounce off the surface or it's going to pass through, like with glass or transparency. When it passes through the surface, it just travels in a straight line until it hits the next surface. Okay? Pretty straightforward. It doesn't care about what's inside the surface. Volumes, on the other hand, don't care about the surface, except that the surface kind of acts as a boundary for where the volume can take place. This, the volume only cares about what's inside, and the surface only cares about what's outside. So they're complements to each other. I'm going to 
remove that connection to the surface and the box is completely black, absolutely black. And that's because when the light comes to the surface, it's gonna say, oh, hey surface, what do I do? And the surface basically says nothing. It has nothing to tell it and it goes, huh. Then it gets in the middle of it and says, hey, volume, here I am, what should I do? And the volume says absolutely nothing back. And so it just comes back with black. It's like a null, more or less. So we're going to add a shader called volume scatter, okay? This is one of two available volume shaders, the only one we're gonna work with today. We're gonna to plug that into volume. And now we get this really interesting look. And incidentally, there's a bug in Blender 274 that I found that I need to report. Maybe someone else has reported it. You've gotta go out of cycles, Shift-Z, and back into cycles for the shadows to be cast correctly. And now they are being cast correctly. So here we are, it looks like a really, really, ah, like a sponge, I guess or like a cloud is a nice way to think of it. The main controller we're gonna worry about here is density. So if I increase my density, the sponge gets thicker, okay? So if I set me to my density to something like 50, it looks like a solid cube, but it isn't a solid cube. It is, if you get really close, you can sort of see, it is a cloud. You can see those cloud-like edges. Whereas if the density is one, which is the default value, it's a very, very soft, porous, cloud that you can almost see through. Uh, actually, you really can see through if you had something distinct behind it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with this density using textures, procedural textures. For this tutorial, we're gonna use a Voronoi texture. A Voronoi texture, if we apply the FAC to the density, the FAC is basically, it's light color, but it's more interested in the numbers as opposed to the image. So we're gonna send those numbers into density. And you're gonna get a similar, similar result if you plugged in color, but it's just good practice to plug in the fact. So here we go, and what do we get? Well, you can't really see much to it. So let's fiddle around here um, for our Voronoi texture. Let's go ahead and apply a math node to our Voronoi texture. Now, let me explain how this works. A Voronoi texture is kind of like a bunch of little floating spheres, but instead of, but rather than these spheres having a hard edge around them, like a bunch of baseballs or basketballs or something, I'm using only American sports here, like soccer balls, there we go. Instead of like having a bunch of soccer balls with hard edges, they're gradient edges. It's like they, they, they kind of move from one sphere into the other very smoothly, so it's a very relaxed movement between one and the other. I know that's not necessarily making sense, but. If you look, you say, oh, they're like a bunch of little balls that are globbed together, um, but it's like they've melted together. What we need to do is find the crisp edges between them. And so we're gonna use the math node to create edges. We're gonna use a less than math node. And if we drop that number down a bit, it's kind of hard to see, but we've got these little spheres starting to form. You should be able to see it more or less. The trick here, is that the output of the Voronoi texture, the output of the Voronoi texture is zero to one. And as we already demonstrated in our volume scatter, one is not very strong. Really, we want it to be like 50, where it's nice and thick, at least when we're trying to figure things out. And when we do the less than node, the less than finds everything that the Voronoi is putting up from zero to one, everything that is 1.2 or lower, the less than node will output it as one, just full on, straight out one. And everything greater than 1.2, Will, will come out as zero, but still my range is from zero to one. And that's a great way to work to figure out some of the specific technical issues you're trying to overcome when you're creating a texture. But now that we've got it figured out, we wanna add another math node and this time use multiply. Now if I multiply by one, I'm gonna get exactly what I had in the first place. Zero is zero, one is one. But if I multiply it by 50, zero is zero and one is now 50. And now this should be exciting. This is exciting. Because look what we've done. We have given life to this Voronoi texture. I mean, isn't that terrific? That really is fun. I'm gonna change my scale of the Voronoi texture down a bit, maybe to 1.5. Strangely, if you make the scale smaller, it makes the textures larger, 2.2. Oh, now that's just, that's just delightful. And maybe I'll change my less than node so these are a bit smaller, 0.1. Looks good, okay. So here I've got my, uh, my first inklings of a volume 
being shaped by a procedural texture. Voronoi is a procedural texture. It's a texture that gets generated within Blender. You will notice there's a little block here on the bottom, a shadow that looks like a square, like it doesn't really belong there. The reason for that is because my block, oh, I just, it just disappeared on me. My block is intersecting with the ground. You can see it as I move around from underneath. They're in exactly the same spot. And that Blender has a hard time with that. Lots of programs have a hard time when that happens. So the way to get around that is select your cube and move it up along the Z axis just a teeny tiny bit. I'm moving mine up. I'm gonna type in 0 .001 along the Z axis. So now they're not in exactly the same spot. You'll see that goes away and my little problem with the intersection on the ground, a little dark square goes away. Okay, so that's great. That gives us something to work at. Let's just, let's just take a quick look at what we've done here then. Here is our texture, okay, our Voronoi texture, and we have cut out the circles basically using a less than math node. We're using this multiply node to define the density because what comes out of here is between zero and one. The multiply node converts that zero to one to between zero and whatever number we put in here and multiply, and that plugs into density, which we've already seen if you remove it. We've seen how if you go from one up to a much higher number, you can make that sponge a lot more dense or that cloud a lot thicker. So we're gonna plug that value in again like it was, and that goes into the volume output, and I have nothing going into the surface. So when light comes to the surface, it says, what should I do, surface? The surface says nothing, ignore me. I don't know what to do. And then it gets to volume and says, what should I do, volume? And volume tells it what to do. It tells you how to move around based on the textures and the so forth that we've put into it, into the volume scatter node and how the node goes into volume. And so the photon has something to do. If we didn't have volume, it all goes black because it has nothing to do and it comes back as nothing, as zero. But we have our volume. Okay, so let's fiddle around just a little bit more. Let's, um. Let's do this. Let's make a copy of our less than node. Let's run the fac from the Voronoi texture into it. And let's, if we run this into the multiply node, so now I'm dealing with the bottom one, and I'm gonna make the value a teeny bit smaller. Instead of 0.1, it's gonna be 0 0.08. And you'll notice my spheres get a tiny bit smaller, okay? Maybe we'll do 0 0.06, all right? Now what I can do, and this is where it gets fun, I've got these other, I have these other math nodes I can play with and we're gonna use the subtract node. Okay, I'm gonna remove that connection. I'm gonna put the subtract into my density controller. Now if I tell my larger sphere to subtract zero, okay, take my larger sphere, which is what this is, less than of 0.1 my larger sphere to subtract zero, I get exactly what I had before. But now if I tell my larger sphere to subtract this slightly smaller sphere, I get this, I get a hollow sphere. Can you see that? Can you see those hollow spheres? Let me up this from 0 0.6 to about 0 0.8. I'm sorry, 0 0.08, too much. Now you can see those spheres being quite hollow. You'll also notice that some of these spheres are cut off. I should point this out. If I go out of, let me just move right to the edge. You see how these spheres are cut off right here along the edge? If I go out of cycles, you'll notice that that's the edge of the box. So as we said at the beginning, the volume, where the volume can take place is defined by the edges of the mesh itself. So they can't go anywhere beyond that. So if the sphere is completely contained inside the shape, then it's gonna be a whole sphere. But if it's cut off by the shape, like this little partial sphere here, it's gonna be cut off. As you can see, in fact, I can use this to line up right along the edge. You can see how all those spheres get cut off. But what I've done here is I have taken a larger sphere because I'm saying everything less than 0.1 on this zero to one scale that Voronoi gives me, everything less than 0.1 is going to be visible. And then I take everything less than 0.08, which is smaller, than this other one. I want you to take that and subtract it from the larger sphere. Plug that into the density controller, which maybe I'll up a bit, make a bit more dense, and I have these hollow spheres that are shading in there. I'm gonna up my samples just a tiny bit. Maybe I'll sample 40. 
instead of 10. Another thing you'll notice is it looks like our spheres are kind of stair-stepping. Do you see that? You see these little dots? Well, that's because you have to define uh, how many times it's gonna sample the volume inside the grid. Anyone who worked with Blender when they were first coming out with volumes, in fact, who worked with volumes at that time, knows about step size, okay? Looks like steps, step size. You can make the step size much smaller, but it also takes a lot longer to calculate. So if instead of 0.1, I could set it to 0.05. And those little steps become smaller and it becomes just a, a little, the shape becomes a little more defined. It also seems like it becomes darker and that's simply because it's putting in more steps to calculate this. I could do 0.01 which is really going to start chugging here. It's really trying hard. But you'll also notice that the jaggies along the edge of these spheres pretty much goes away. I do need to adjust my multiply node now, take it down to say 50 or 30, because it's become essentially a bit darker, a bit harder for light to pass through. Um, I found when I work on things, sometimes I'll set my step size up to as large as one although in this case, that's not the case. I will actually increase my step size while I'm working. And then I, when it's time to render, I might decrease it and make adjustments depending on how nice I need it to be. So I, in this case, I might just set it to 0 0.2 just so we can move quickly. Nah, 0 0.1, we'll go back to where we were. Just a little something to think about. Okay, let's give our volume scatter just a teeny bit of color. I'm gonna go yellow. Now what's interesting here is as I go yellow, you'll notice the spheres go blue. What is going on there? Well, if you're, if you're familiar with a bit of color theory on the additive spectrum, yellow is the complement, the complementary color to blue. What happens is volume scatter scatters the color that you define. So if I say I want the color of my scatter to be yellow, that means any time yellow comes in contact with this shader, it shoots it off in other directions. It sends it away. So if you send away all the yellow, and everything close to yellow, what you end up with is the blue. That doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. And in a future tutorial, I'll show you how to set up a shader that can um, give you color that's close to what, you're, what you define for it to be in the first place. For now, we're not really gonna worry about it. Let's just give it a color. Um, and let's give the ground a background color too while we're at it. Maybe we'll give it a, a slightly yellow color to make that blue pop out a little bit. Um, Let's see, HSV, saturation down, value up. Something like that looks just dandy. Okay, back to our cube. Look at this, isn't this great? It's a cube, it's a cube. And yet, look at all this stuff we're doing with it just with this little small texture node setup. It's terrific. Um, okay, we're gonna try something else now. Let's uh, do another less than node. I'm gonna press Shift Control D, which creates the node and preserves the inputs. I'm gonna send this node into my density controller and remove the other uh, connection, though keeping those nodes in place. So we know what these three nodes on the top are the hollow spheres. This bottom node, I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. Instead of 0.08, I'm gonna make it 0 0.02 maybe. Just little tiny balls, okay? 0 0.015, even smaller. Now. Let's take our hollow spheres, let's make another math node, and let's use an add. Okay, we're gonna add this. But instead of, let's see, plug that into the density controller. Right now, if I add zero to these, I get nothing. If I added one, it'd just be a solid block. Hopefully that makes sense, it just means, hey, Every time it samples one of the volume spots, it's gonna say, oh, you're one. And then I'm gonna multiply that with my multiply node here. But instead of adding zero to my hollow spheres, I'm gonna add the small spheres to my hollow spheres. And what do I get? I get a small sphere inside of a larger hollow sphere. Isn't that terrific? That, that, is, that is really awesome. That's just a great little thing that we can do. A fairly simple setup that makes that sort of thing work. It's just, oh, it's just terrific. Now, if we really wanted to go, well, let's, let's just review real quick. This is all being driven by one texture, okay, a Voronoi texture. I could, for instance, change my scale here to 1.5, which would make them larger. 
or one to make them very large. I could make them smaller by increasing the number, like five, which give me a bunch of teeny tiny spheres. I'm gonna go back to around two where I was in the first place, 2.2, .2, whatever, two is good. I have this top less than node, which defines a boundary for a reasonably large sphere that comes out of the Verona texture. Another less than node that makes a slightly smaller sphere, and I'm subtracting that slightly smaller sphere from the larger sphere, which gives me a hollow sphere. That output goes into this add node. The reason I'm doing an add node is because I've made another less than node that's very small for these small spheres, and I'm adding it to the hollow spheres. Now, all of this, this whole region here, Everything here on the left side, okay, all these nodes here, are interested in the values 0 to 1. It's all happening in range 0 to 1. That's how you know you're working with the texture. Then I send it into this multiply node, which I, in my brain, I call it a density controller. My density controller says, okay, yeah, I'm getting 0 to 1, but you want it to be from 0 to what? 0 to 60. 0 to 200, which is going to probably give me some funky errors or something. Um, Eh, not too funky, but 0 to 40, whatever it is, it controls the density of what's left. That goes into the density input of my shader node, my volume scatter node, which I've given a color, yellow, which gives me its complement. Not that you really need to know that. It's just a funky result, and, you know, you can do whatever you want there, and you'll get something different every time. Don't worry about that too much. We're not worrying about this bottom setting. We're basically just worrying about density, and the volume scatter goes into the volume output, and there is no surface output, so it's completely invisible. We could do something like uh, have a glass surface output, and then you'd be able to see through that glass into the volume, no into the volume, into these materials that I'm putting in here, and uh, you know the, the surface might bend the light a little bit, and then obviously these volumes are going to do things with the light because we can see them and then it'll come out the glass on the other side. So there's lots of things that you could do with it, but generally you sort of work the volumes and the surfaces separately. So that's the entire thing. We're, we're going to do one more, one more setting here. We're just, I'm just going to duplicate these two nodes. And rather than add these two nodes together, I'm going to send my small spheres Let me, let me tweak that for a second, make sure I got that right. So now this add node is basically going nowhere, which was adding my hollow spheres with my small sphere. My small sphere, it's doing nothing. My hollow spheres going in, give me hollow spheres. I could also send my small spheres in, but in this instance, I'm gonna make my small, my small spheres very, very dense, 150. I'm going to make my large spheres not dense at all. I'll give them like a value of 10. You can't see them right now because they're not plugged in. And I'm going to give this guy a different color. Maybe, I don't know, blue, bluish. Which, I guess because it's so dense you won't even be able to see that. And now what do I do with these two nodes? How can I combine them together? Well, what I'm going to use, just like with the math nodes that I use here, I'm going to use an add shader. Add shaders are what you use for volumes, for the most part. You don't mix volumes very often, you add volumes. So I add them together, and now I have the hollow spheres, which are coming out green because that's a complement of pink, um, with these solid, more dense spheres in the middle. And there you go. You can play around with this stuff, uh, absolutely. I can change the size of my smaller spheres, maybe to 0 0.05, make them much larger, so they sit inside there. Um, I, could, I could make them overcome the rest of the spheres by making them 0.11, and now you can't even see that. Well, you can sort of see the hollow spheres inside there, can't you? Um, I could change the color. I could tweak the density. I could make this guy be much larger. There's lots of things you can do to play around with this, uh, but really the purpose of this is just to introduce you to the idea of how the nodes work with a volume. And in future tutorials, we will do samples, demonstrations of how we can use this concept of how these, uh, how this node, these nodes work for volumes for creating things that might be a little more useful to you, like smoke and fire and other things like that. That's it. Thanks for watching.